Hey everyone, and welcome back to another one. Welcome to Program Code 101, the place where we learn the art and skills required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. In our previous video, we looked at the concepts of arrays, including how and when to use arrays. We also generated pseudocode using one dimensional arrays, which included the declaration, initialization, the entering, as well as printing of content stored within arrays. If you missed the details of that video, please select the link above to review. In today's video, we will be looking at the concept of array manipulation. We will also be generating pseudocode using one dimensional array that searches for and manipulates items stored within arrays. Array manipulation allows the addition, removal and or update of elements stored within an array. Actions are performed using the index, which accesses the location of the item stored within the array. Example, array manipulation, adding values. The following example indicates that there are two arrays. The first array stores the base salary of a group of employees, and the second contains the bonus that each employee is expected to receive. A third array is required to store the gross salary of each employee. The problem requires a calculation, which involves adding items found in the arrays, salary and bonus, to generate the gross salary of each employee. The solution shows a for loop header, which contains the keyword for, followed by the counter variable, i, and the total number of iterations required. The array, called gross, is a new array that will store the generated total of the added values in the arrays, salary, and bonus. The counter variable, i, is used to ensure that the index of each array corresponds and identifies the correct values. The illustration shows that with each iteration, the sum generated will be stored at the appropriate location within the gross array. Once the total number of iterations is achieved, the gross array will have the amount stored for each employee. The solution then ends with the use of the keyword, end for. Example two, manipulating values within arrays. This example indicates the use of an array to store the price of specific types of shoes in a shoe store. The store owner wants to increase the price of sneakers that are currently under the price of $1,500 by 20%. Pseudo code instructions are needed that will increase the prices of sneakers within the array that meets the specified criteria. Consider that the values displayed are the current prices of different types of sneakers found within the shoe store. The array shows the details for 10 sneakers. The solution shows a for loop header containing the counter variable k and the total number of times the loop will be executed. A selection statement is then used to evaluate whether the value found at the current index is less than 1500. If this is true, the value at the current location will be increased by 20%. This is done by multiplying the value by 1.20. The updated or new price is then stored back to the current location of the array. Once this is done, the if statement then terminates, and the for loop continues by moving the index to the next location for evaluation. This is done for the total number of iterations for the loop statement. Note that if the evaluated condition is false, the loop ignores the statements within the selection construct and moves on. The illustration shows the update of each array element based on location that meets the needs of the criteria specified. A total of five elements are expected to be updated within the array. Once the total number of iterations is achieved, the array should now be updated to have the increases based on the specified criteria. The solution then ends with the use of the keyword end for. Example three, array manipulation, sorting values. Consider an array that stores the age of five students in a class. The current content of the array should be sorted in ascending order, from youngest to oldest student. Pseudocode instructions are required to enable the sorting of the age array, after which the array content should be displayed. The solution shows the use of two for loops, both being iterated for a total of five times. The first for loop, known as the outer for, shows the counter variable, A, and total number of loops needed. The second for loop, known as the inner for, shows the counter variable, I, as well as the total number of iterations needed. Note that the inner for loop will be completed, looping five times, before the outer loop continues. The inner loop uses a technique referred to as bubble sorting. 
This method compares the adjacent elements within the array to determine which is larger. If the first element is larger than the second, a swap will occur. Otherwise, the next two adjacent elements are compared. This is done until the largest element within the array moves to the end of the array. The illustration shows this in effect. The first two elements are compared and swapped because 15 is greater than 9, after which the second and third elements are compared. Because the second element will now be 15, compared to the third element, 16, no swap will occur, and the loop continues by comparing the third to fourth element. If the counter variable is 5, no comparison will be made. This is because there is no sixth element to compare. The outer for loop then repeats the process, traversing the array multiple times to ensure that all values have been placed in their correct order. Once the outer for loop has achieved its total number of iterations, it will be terminated using the outer end for keyword. The solution then ends through the use of a for loop to display the elements within the array, now being in an ascended sort order. In the next video, we will discuss the concept of flowcharts. We will also generate flowcharts using various pseudocode constructs, that is, sequence, selection, and repetition constructs. Thank you for being a part of another one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.